We're well. joined now by your colleague, Husker Alliance, Sean Callahan. Sean, good morning. Uh, Tony White was at the podium yesterday after practice, and they were a number 11 last year in total defense. He wants to be number one this year. As Sip wrote afterwards, Nebraska needs some All-Americans or Big Ten, all Big Ten players for that to be possible. Do you think they have those types of players on this roster, Sean? <laughs> It's, it's, I mean, I don't know if they have an All-American at that level. They've got a couple guys, maybe three guys that can contend for all-conference. But you got to remember, there's 18 teams in the Big Ten right now. Point. Um, so, you know, if you're a defensive tackle, there's 36 starting defensive tackles in the Big Ten. If you're all Big Ten, you're the top two out of 36. That's pretty good. And, you gotta be, and, and that usually means you're an All-American or high-level draft pick um, in a league like this now going forward. But I, I think the biggest thing, guys, is the schedule. Their first seven games, they probably only see one offense that will be a high level offense in Colorado. You know, I don't look at Rutgers, Illinois, Purdue, Northern Iowa, and UTEP, and um, so the, some of the other teams that will play early as teams that have elite offense. Indiana is the other one. Um, so, if anything, I think that early schedule could help build their defense into a top unit because I don't think they're going to see anyone elite. And there'll be a lot of home games, a lot of crowd noise. So that does help, I think, defensive play, especially early in the season. Yeah, Bill was saying, that's exactly what Bill was just saying a little while ago, and he says that a lot. Scheduled matters in that conversation. Sean, you were struck yesterday. Sean Callahan joins us. You were struck yesterday by Nash Huttmacher, by his physique, um, by the way he presented himself. Why? Well, just the way he's been able to reshape himself, you know, go into wrestling, come back to football, that is not easy to do. And to step back into wrestling at, at the highest amateur level league, arguably in, in the country, the Big Ten Conference, mm-hmm. and to qualify for the national tournament when he hadn't done it since high school, um, you know, he had an unbelievable wrestling year. And to get his weight down to 285 when he had been playing at times 325, 330, Still at 295, I think they'd like him at around 310, and that's not going to be a problem. He'll, he'll get to that weight, um, you know, in the right way. Um, but it reminds me a little bit of Tanner Farmer. When Tanner Farmer did wrestling, it kind of helped him knock off some bad pounds. And then he became a much more aggressive player than actually got into wrestling when he was done with football and went to Concordia and then, then joined the Olympic program as a Gre- Greco-Roman wrestler, but was a national runner-up at the NAIA level. Uh, because he's able to get an extra year of eligibility and wrestle at Concordia. Sean, you're able to see last week in practice, uh, Dylan Rayola was, uh, you know, obviously in a half hour you saw Dylan Rayola. What was your initial impressions of what you saw from him, Sean? Well, you know, we, I'd say you don't get to see a ton in the window we get to. I mean, luckily, Sip and I got to see him for a whole week for yep. three straight hours for entire practices. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you, we, you know, we have a pretty good idea of w- what you're getting. It's a matter of, how it will look now in live team drills situations. He's got the physical tools, the arm talent, everything you'd want. I mean, you just don't – Nebraska just hasn't had quarterbacks like that very often, if ever, coming in right away um, with all the all the tools. It's a matter of can you handle it all. As Sip always says, read defenses and, re- and recognize things because you're going to play some of the best defenses in college football, the Big Ten, and those defensive coordinators make a living – to try to throw off young quarterbacks and make them guess. Um, so, I mean, that, that's the part we still don't know. All the tools are there, though, for him to be a really good quarterback, as we know. Um, but it's sometimes more than just tools. you got to have the intangibles and develop those here now over the spring. Sean, we're, we're jumping around a little bit. Let's just jump back to defense. You're hearing, I know we talked about this yesterday, some, some kind of buzz about Vincent Shavers, who would be a freshman inside linebacker, what do you? What's his background? Give us some background on Shavers. Yeah, four practices in. I think that's a name to watch at the okay. linebacker position. Um, was a University of Miami commit for a long time, um, and, and then the Hurricanes filled up and kind of parted ways with him late, uh, and that's when Nebraska was able to to, to get involved uh, and bring him in for a late December official visit and, and sign him as an early enrollee. Um, but you know, he's a Miami kid that was committed to the Hurricanes and with the transfer portal and scholarship spots. Um, sometimes the high school guys can lose their spots late in recruiting classes. I think that's that's pretty much what happened for him in Nebraska uh, with some of the connections they had on staff in Miami. 
they were able to get him on campus for a late visit with Phil Simpson and some other people, and and you know ends up it looks like he's going to be one of the real steals that they brought in. And, and he, he's a high three star recruit. I mean, I think some people might even have him as a four star. So it wasn't like he was underrated um, or anything like that. And you know, I think when you talk about the University of Miami, they can get any linebackers they want down there. There's tons of linebackers in that part of the country. Um, so he had to be pretty good to get that early offer from them. Um, and I think Nebraska just kind of fell into a really good situation uh, late in the game. It's going to appear at least early on to be something to watch. What do you make of the corner situation? It was discussed by Tony White yesterday. and he Okay, I, it seems like it's assumed that Tommy Hill will start. I never make that kind of assumption, but it seems like that's what people are doing. And who would be the candidates in your mind to start opposite of of Tommy Hill at the other corner spot. Yeah, you have to assume Hartsfog's in that mix right now, um, but he could also roll back into a safety. I mean, look, I mean, I, I think um, with the injury uh, to Singleton mm-hmm. for the spring, that that, that it, it kind of makes it hard to get a clear look because you know when healthy, you expect him as a starter too as a safety. Um, but Isaac Gifford, Tommy Hill, Deshaun Singleton, those three guys on paper look like st- starters along with Marquis Buford and Malcolm Hardstock. I, mean, I think those are the five today okay. Okay. with the most experience for the secondary. But then you have Ethan Nation and Bly Hill, um, you know, who will battle and, and give Hardstock a run, I think, at that corner spot. Um, and then uh, Dwight Boodle's a name to watch, Jeremiah Charles. I mean, I think those are probably um, the four names that are still contending with the five names I mentioned. But they're deep, though. They've got a lot of options in my opinion on the back end of that secondary are you surprised that we're hearing Bly Hill already Bly Hill um yes and no I mean they brought him in as a portal guy he played one year but he played at a lower level FCS Um, but you know he's got great stock I mean his dad was a 10-year NFL player his mom was a high-level athlete um you know he's six he's six three legit yeah and so he's he's got that Stanley Jean Baptiste type frame on him. Yeah, more of that, please. And can get up there and line up. And they, he was a projection take. They didn't really necessarily take him because of his film as a freshman. He had all, all right film, but they knew kind of the big picture of him, what he could end up being. So, yeah, he, he was an interesting portal take of the six they took um, in December. You know, he was the one that kind of was an outlier because he didn't have near the body of work as maybe the other five guys did. Sean, always good stuff. Thanks for the time. We will chat with you again next week. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you. Sean Callahan.